Hello, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral and a big bank holiday weekend and a happy flat season to you as finally we start to properly kick into gear with the first of two classics at Newmarket uh, this weekend. Uh, we'll be looking ahead to whether Native Trail is the next Pinatubo or the next Frankel. Of course, he does uh, have potentially his biggest danger uh, in his own stable. Valley Doyle might have something to say about that uh, with a couple of potential crackers as well. Then, of course, we've got the 1,000 guineas on Sunday where the first five in the betting are either Irish or French trained. Uh, we've also got some uh, potentially uh, top-class sprinters uh, in handicaps uh, and in Group 3 company. Uh, and we'll also be having a little bit of a look at Thirsk as well. Uh, for uh, a bit of a treat going up north there's some Yorkshire action for the Hunt Cup of course won by uh, future Group 1 star far a few years ago not entirely sure we'll get anything of that quality at uh, this time around we've also got potential Oaks clues in the Pretty Polly on Sunday uh, and the, uh, the Suffolk Handicap as well with a uh, another good weekend potentially for the boys in blue and William Buick who is riding very well indeed unless of course uh, you were involved at 1-4 to four this afternoon aboard your beer. But either way, uh, we'll be hoping to find some angles for a new market in what looks uh, like uh, two absolutely potentially vintage uh, guineas this weekend. The two-year-old form is already working out a treat at various levels. Uh, will it work out at the top level? Well, we will soon find out, won't we? Uh, this is live and interactive, of course, uh, so thanks for joining us uh, live uh, from home or wherever you might well be watching this. If you're on YouTube, do like and subscribe to that stream as well. Uh, and uh, get your comments and your selections in on the chat box. I'm sure plenty of you are holding tasty anti-post tickets about uh, Native Trail for the big race on Saturday. And quite a few of you, I'm sure, cannot resist taking on a short price favourite uh, with so many beautifully bred rivals up against him. Uh, luckily, we've got some beautifully bred pundits to get stuck into the action as well. And hopefully we can find a winner or seven. Just a seven. I'll settle for seven between a lot of us. That's how confident I am as we get stuck into the flat season at Newmarket this weekend. And to my left, a, a man who has been rattling up and down the gallops, ready and raring to go for the flat season. It is, of course, Mr. Graham Rodway. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. Yeah, what an introduction that was. There you go. Very are you, good. Are you, uh, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, do you have a good record first time out or are you going to need a few runs to get into it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had a few uh, goes on the, over the jumps recently, so uh, yeah, just coming in uh, fit from a, a spell chasing. Not a bad, not a bad, uh, not a bad angle, is it? Normally, you know, you you you, you tired from the uh, the jump season, and you uh, it's a bit of a refresher on the flat. Absolutely, yeah, and and it's this is the best time of the year in the flat. I say this every year, like you know, this is when all the excitement comes, isn't yeah. it? You know, right at the start of the season, we've got all the stars yet to be made. We don't know how good Native Trail is. We don't know how good Tenebrism is. Mm -hmm. You know. We're going to find out in the next few days. Really exciting times, isn't it? Yeah, we are. Uh, and that's uh, again the uh, with with the jump season. I mean, we've literally just seen honeysuckle winning. Um, <laughs> you know what? Half For an like hour the fifteenth or sixteenth or twentieth time, was 16 it? Sixteen on the bounce. 16 Incredible, on the bounce. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and only half an hour later, we're talking about potential. Uh, um, well, potential superstar stallions if, if Native Trail keeps uh, keeps going like he's going. Yeah, well, he's already going to be going to stud, isn't he? No matter what happens sure. from here on in. So, um, uh, but he does look really good, doesn't he? But there's been a, a few a few look better than him who have been beaten in this race, haven't yeah. there, in the past? Air Force Blues and Pinatubos, they were all rated yeah. higher than him. So let's see what he can do. was Pinatubo, wasn't he, when he yeah. beat, so... Unbelievable. It can happen. Mm. It can happen indeed. Uh, we will find out whether uh, Graham will think it uh, is going to happen a little bit later on as we get stuck into the big race. Uh, Tom Siegel is uh, live uh, from the living room. He's, uh, the studies for the jump season. The living room is for the flat. Uh, lovely stuff. Uh, Tom, are you ready and raring to go at, uh, at Newmarket uh, this afternoon and tomorrow and Sunday? Three days, of course. I wasn't raring and ready to go this afternoon. I made a bit of a mess of it. Well, I didn't have many bets, to be honest, but I, but I, but I should have backed uh, Shine So Bright, shouldn't we? I can't believe the price. When I saw it was 9-2, to two, I was kicking myself. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait. Love the guineas. Favourite favorite flat races of the year, always the guineas. I think they're just brilliant. They're, they're, the only issue I've got is that it's so hard at Newmarket to work out where they're going to go these days. There's so many guineas have been decided by draws and paces and things that not really my cup of tea but hopefully they'll all go down the middle and we'll have a perfectly fair race and the best horse will win and it'll probably be native trail 
Mm. Although, admittedly, they all went down the middle last year, uh, Tom, and if you weren't sort of middle to far side, even those down the near side were struggling. So even when they go down the middle, it, uh, it could be hard to pick out who's in the best posse. Yeah, and luckily this year we've got the 25 runner handicap, haven't we? The sprint handicap, which will give us a clue. But if you're having a bet now, I wouldn't be too sure. You know, if I was Charlie Appleby, I'd have been a bit gutted that I was drawn on the wings, but 15 and 1. I'd have preferred to have been in and around horses to make sure I had a, a you know, I was uh, right in the action rather than maybe being on the wrong side. But we'll see. We'll see. I, you know, it's really looking forward to it. It's a great race. Lovely stuff. Uh, and uh, hopefully, like I said, find a few winners uh, with Tom and uh, Graham. And uh, with the jump season just about behind us, uh, Simon Clare has uh, been put out uh, into a field for the summer. And David Stevens <laughs> is, uh, is ready and raring to go. Uh, David, welcome back. Good evening, gents. Great to be here. Yes, my colleague, my esteemed colleague, is on his way back from Punchestown, so he's in no state to do anything, I'm sure, after three days out there. But, yeah, look, I love the Guineas meeting. I'm like Tom as well. It is amazing, actually. You mentioned Honeysuckle there. She's only just past the post. She's, what is she, 16 from 16. Native trail, 5 from 5. Got a bit to go to match Honeysuckle. But it is the flat season, which means fail to finish, has ironically finished. We move on to our flat offering, which is beaten by a length. So if your horse over at Newmarket over the next two days is beaten by a length or indeed less, you'll get your money back as a free bet up to £10. So different season, different offer. But hopefully we'll find a few winners tonight and you won't need these offers anyway. Yeah, that, uh, that, will, uh, that will do it. Are you feeling confident, David? Uh, are you going to change your mind halfway through the preview? What are you, what are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling incredibly confident at this stage of the season because... We haven't backed any losers yet. That is true. That is true. Yeah, it is all to play for, isn't it? Um, it could well be. Could be your year, David. It's been some time coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, let's get stuck into the uh, the action then. Um, first off, just a general uh, before we get into that first race, just a general feel about the the, the two lineups for the uh, for the guineas so far. Um, any obviously apart from Inspiral not uh, not making it to the uh, the track on uh, on Sunday, no real shocks or disappointments. No, I think they're both really good guineas, aren't they? Um, you know, both exciting horses at the head of both, both the markets and um, real potentially top class animals um, going forward. So um, I don't think anyone could have any complaints. Mm. And the two year old form from last year, uh, Tom, is, is so far uh, proving quite hard uh, quite hard to um, to knock. Yeah, yeah, I've got a complaint. Where's Homeless Songs? Mm, yeah. I couldn't believe it when he said she, you know, what kind, the excuse was she needs a bend. What kind of four-legged animal can't run in a straight line? <laughs> Good grief. Uh, I, well, yeah, Homeless Songs, apparently. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, horses for, uh, for courses, as it were. Yeah, that, is that your, uh, your first flat anti-post ticket up in flames, I guess, then, Tom? Uh, my second. I've got. I had one in the in the triple time I backed in the uh, two thousand guineas as well, and that one uh, that one worked like a supposedly worked like a worked like an absolute machine at Newmarket, and then the very next day they said it injured itself and wasn't was out was out for the for the rest of the season, whatever. But uh, could it be so triple what? time and homeless songs? I'm, I'm I'm on a loser already. Yeah, they never tell you what kind of machine it worked like, do they, uh, That's Tom? Right. That's quite, right. Quite easily be a dishwasher, but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's crack on to uh, the Newmarket's card then on uh, on Saturday. Uh, the ground is officially good. The uh, the times weren't particularly quick today, so uh, it'd be interesting to see how uh, uh, how that unfolds because quite a few uh, um, trainers, uh, would, I imagine, are anticipating quite quick ground at Newmarket because we haven't had a great deal of rain, have we? Uh, but uh, we uh, we kick off with um, possibly the toughest race of the entire weekend, uh, but potentially one of the uh, the best, the six furlong handicap at uh, Newmarket, the second race on Saturday's card. Uh, we have 20 of them going, Run to Freedom does not go, uh, and it's, uh, it leaves uh, first folio at the top of the betting. Asjad, uh, seven on first folio, 15 to two Asjad, eight to one Tarhib, eight to one Jumbi, Black Rod is nine to one, Strike Red 11s, Bickerstaff uh, is 11 to one, and it's bigger prices the rest. This is a tough little race on paper, but it is a very good one. Uh, looking back at the last winner, six of the last ten uh, Rodders went on to uh, to win group races. Uh, one of the others went on to win the Stewards Cup. We've had uh, Group One winners come out of this as well. It is, um, I mean, it's an absolute nightmare on paper, but we know you've got to be a very good horse to win it. Uh, yeah, um, because there's often not not that much of a gap is there between the hand, top mm. handicappers and um, the group sprinters, and this is obviously a top handicap sprint, isn't it? So um, yeah, the draw is going to be interesting, isn't it? I mean, I. 
<clears throat> I try not to too look. Well, I dislike talking about the draw too much, you know. Further ground, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ground, yeah. Well, what else don't I like talking about? Um, <laughs> It, because it's a bit of a guess, isn't it, really? Mm. We don't know w what side you want to be on, really. Um, so I've just thought, well, I'd go for store one, which is Summergand. Course and distance, loves it there, don't he, Newmarket. Um, yeah, he's come down like six, seven pounds in the weights uh, for not really doing much wrong, really. He was running well in, in big handicaps midfields last season, and um, then they took him over to Dubai. Maybe he just didn't take to it there, but he's come down four pounds since he went to, to Dubai. Yeah, I think he's two pound lower than when he won the Stewards Cup. He won a listed race last year at Newmarket. Yeah, I thought he had a good chance. Some again each way, but um, yeah, you want to be getting as many places as you can here, don't you? How many are you offering here, Dave? Five places in this one, Rodders. Five places. Well, that's about uh, yeah, it's about half of what we uh, what we need, I reckon. But um, it is a, a bit of a cracker. So you're going with you're going with proven group form rather than future potential. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you're talking about like Asjad, we at the top, the, the potential horse. Mm. He's trained by James Halton, isn't he? The John Dance um, yeah. man. Yeah. Used to be with Sir Michael Stout. And he's um, he's got some moves so far, hasn't he, James? Yeah, he's done all right, hasn't he? Yeah. He's knocking winners in left, right, and centre. <laughs> They're like four winners from a handful of runners, hasn't yeah. he? So, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, still very early in his career. But yeah, I mean, looked good at uh, at Red Car, didn't he? But. Um, He's, is he five pound higher? I think, but he, he, I think he's carrying a five pound penalty. He's five, He's actually gone up five pounds, so he's not particularly. You know, he's not well in. Mm. But he, yeah, he could definitely improve, couldn't he? Um, I, yeah, I just I like some again coming down the weights. Okay, some again coming down the uh, the weights. Then yeah, of course, uh, Group Three winner uh, at uh, the Rolly Mile, uh, listed winner on the uh, the July course as well. So clearly loves the track, and that is kind of uh, key. Uh, past nine winners of this race, uh, Tom had experienced one of the new market tracks and, and run well there. Uh, that is something um, that uh, that Asjad has to uh, to overcome because as we saw today, and as you've said. Uh, before the uh, the show as well, or, or just before we got into this race, it's a quirky course. Uh, jockeys, horses. Uh, sometimes you think they don't even know where to go halfway through the contest, and um, having experience of that dip can certainly help. Absolutely, yeah. Big, wide open course, a lot of wind. I think people don't underestimate the fact of the wind. I wonder if that was what was making the times very slow today. I didn't actually clock whether the wind was up or not, but. Uh, Definitely looked to the times, but definitely slow, weren't they? So I don't think it's rattlingly quick, uh, but it's not surprising because they've got two more days to go. I think it'll be quicker tomorrow and then quicker again on Sunday. Uh, what do I think about this? I, well, like Rodders says, I'm not a draw or a ground or really a sprint handicap guru at all. They're not my type of races. So this wouldn't be, uh, this wouldn't be uh, my first port of, port of call for the weekend. But nonetheless, I, I have had a, had a couple of goes in this. I thought... Uh, First folio for James Ferguson was a very interesting horse. He won that race at York last year and he won it really easily. And then he sort of got bogged down in soft ground when he was well fancied for the stewards after that at Goodwood. I don't think that's his track anyway. And then he, he ran two perfectly good races, one behind a horse I love, great ambassador, who I think is going to be one of the stars of the season. So he wasn't beaten far by him at Newmarket on the other course. So I thought he'd go really well, provided the ground was, was quick. I see he's into favourite now, which uh, a bit annoying. Uh, and the other one I liked was, I, I get the summer hand uh, uh, argument totally. It's just not in my nature to tip eight-year-olds with loads of noughts by their name, but I totally get it. Uh, the other one I liked was a horse called Persuasion, which is moved from Charlie Hills to the, the uh, Barons. Uh, Nicola, and what's his uh, Yeah, the Barons. Let's call them that before I get their names wrong. David and uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has won twice first time out for Charlie Hills. He ran in the Guineas, actually, on, on when he was a three-year-old. He led the, led the Guineas for a long way. He won a good race at Haydock last year. He won on his debut at Goodwood as a two-year-old. I think he's been trying out for a drop back to six furlongs. Uh, they're incredibly good with their sprint handicap as the Barons. I think Persuasions could potentially make up into a really good money spinner for them. So those were my two, first folio and uh, persuasion. They're both drawn high. Now, I don't know. I, I noticed just another bottle's in 10, isn't he? He's a very fast horse. Apollo 1 is in 13. I thought that might be where the pace was, but who knows where they're going to go. Uh, watching the racing today, if anything, they were going a little bit, sort of edging a little bit towards the middle, towards the far side, but we just don't know because no one really came up the stand side. So we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. But those, those would be my two, uh, first folio and first wager. 
Okay, yeah, first folio who uh, you know, has won a couple of crackers at this track in the yard are absolutely on fire, aren't they, Tom? Um, yeah. they, uh, they've had uh, plenty of winners. There's one at Red Car yesterday which um, came there travelling, went through the gears and careered away. Daniel Muscat clearly very much uh, riding at the top of his game as well. Uh, other horses we, we should throw into this. Jumbi, of course, being well talked up as a, a potential group uh, at class sprinter in time. Um, I thought first folio is one of them. I think it's also worth mentioning tactical. Uh, guys here who um, has uh, very much one of those um, typical four-year-old profiles, doesn't he, of having a really good two-year-old season, then not quite finding his feet last year. But um, we saw with new mandate, for example, earlier on this week, that sometimes you can go completely missing in your three-year-old season and it can still work out for you. Um, he's, he's rated 107, but two horses have defied big weights in this. Mr Lupton and Gifted Master were rated uh, higher than that when uh, when winning this contest. So I thought tactical was a little bit interesting, Tom. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with them. You could, but the, thing, the problem with races like this, I find, is that I, there's little bits of form you can go on all of them. I mean, William Haggis's horse, Tarhib, there's got no chance on form, has she? But uh, Hamdan, uh, the Shadwell, have kept her, haven't they? Rated 83. They've got rid of, you know, most of their horses. They've kept an 83 rated, uh, you know, handicapper for William Haggis. So uh, Haggis has all obviously said she's miles better than that. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have kept her. She's in there. Ratia's there. Jumbi. I know they think Jumbi will end up running in Group 1s before the season's out. There's plenty you can find. Tactical, yeah, he's definitely got a chance. Along, But, you know, you could probably say the same about nearly all of them. Yeah, you probably could, yeah. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that's a new market sprint handicap for you, uh, David. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, you were saying you were feeling confident because you haven't backed a loser yet. What's the first <laughs> cab off the rank? Hey, you've just mentioned the two that are on my list. Jumbi. Should be sharper for a reappearance third at the course earlier this month. And yeah, hopes that this, this horse will be better than a handicapper in time. And a horse who is already a group winner, and that's tactical, a group one, uh, sorry, a group winning a two year old, no less. As you say, we've got to put a line through last season. He's had the wind up since then. And Andrew Balding's horse is already in flying form. I thought Ryan Moore was a, an interesting uh, jockey book in there for Andrew. Likewise, uh, William Buick for Jumby. William Buick, of course, odds on favourite to be champion jockey for the first time this year. He's already been banging in the winners. They don't count towards the title, of course, but it starts tomorrow. And if Will can carry on that sort of form, he'll surely justify that odds-on status. OK, lovely stuff. Uh, first race uh, of uh, uh, the uh, the day for us, then, is this 150 at Newmarket. Graham, you'll be playing? Yeah, I'll be playing uh, some again each way. Yep, five okay. places. Lovely stuff. Tom Siegel? Yeah, I will back, or have backed, uh, Persuasion and First Folio. Persuasion and first folio it is then. I will uh, take a, a, a chance with tactical bouncing back to form. And David Stevens uh, is kind of covering similar bases there with, uh, with tactical. And Jumby as well, Dave? Yeah, Jumby and tactical, my two here. So we've really put up about seven in that race. So yeah. we're getting off to a, a really um, a really simple start. Well, OK. Well, uh, Destiny Sounds fancies Apollo 1. Alan Keane fancies Mr Wagyu. Trevor Meeks fancies, uh, thinks Musica at first, going for a completely <laughs> different race entirely. And Mark Smith fancies Strike Red as well. Uh, so uh, Bubba 1407 thinks the low numbers might have an advantage. I don't know if that's just generally in life or in this race <laughs> or uh, whatever we're going for. So plenty of opinions are already for uh, New Market on Saturday. Uh, but uh, scrap New Market, the Guineas is one thing, but the Thirsk Hunt Cup which I have to take time to say, uh, is, uh, of course, a uh, fascinating contest uh, up at the, the beautiful uh, North Yorkshire track. Uh, and we've got a cracking lineup this year as well. Astro King, 4-1 to one favourite here. Trey Fleur is 15-2 to two with Star Sheba. On a session, 8-1. to one. Dubai Love, 8-1. to one. Cruyff Turn, 8-1. to one. Pisa Nello is 9-1. to one. Lion Tower, 10-1. to one. Uh, And bigger prices to the, uh, the rest for a, uh, a really cracking lineup this year, uh, Tom. Um, I can only assume, should, was this a price-wise race or have you had to be digging into the Thirsk form? No, no, I had a good look at the Thirsk Hunt Cup. Uh, this is much more Tomo type of thing. Nice little rounder bend, lots of runners getting in each other's way. Love it. OK, well, here we go. Let's get into it then, um, because uh, it's an interesting race. I always think uh, it's, uh, at first, Tom, that it, it, it's not a bad angle to stay just a little bit further uh, over this uh, this mile. And we've got a big field, like you said. That inside can be a bit uh, bit of a nightmare. Uh, we've had future group horses go on to win this. You've got a favourite coming off the back of an absence, carrying a big weight. Anything could happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I do think it's quite an advantage, especially when the ground's quick, to be up with the pace at first. Because I think it's quite hard to come from behind saying that in a 20 runner field or whatever it is uh if they go too fast it doesn't matter where where you're running if you go too fast too soon you want to you know 
that, that's no good for you. But uh, I looked at the stats for this, even though I'm not a real stats man, and a good few horses have been drawn wide on the outside and, and done well here. So I wasn't too worried about the draw. Uh, what I was worried about for one of the ones I originally fancied, Trey Flo, was whether he'd get too far behind, because I wasn't sure. I mean, there will be pace, because I think uh, Croy Turn will go forward and John baptiste will go forward and a few others in there. And so there will be pace, but I thought he might get too far back. Astro King's obviously the class in the field. Uh, could easily win again. He, did he was his second last year, a bit unlucky. Second flew at the finish, couldn't quite get to starting. Uh, but I thought he was obvi the obvious one. I actually thought the one I mentioned earlier there, uh, John Baptiste at a huge price might go well for Roger Fell. Roger Fell had two handicap winners at Thirsk in the week. He had a Admirality one at Weatherby. Uh, he had a winner of another mile handicap at Pontefract yesterday. His horses are flying. And I thought it was interesting he's moved here because they, they sort of, the owners sort of swap between him and George Bowie. Uh, Any time today, I think it is, he's whirling for George Bowie tomorrow. And this one's come back to his back at Roger Fells. But his horses are flying. And he was fifth in the race last year from the widest draw. Now, when I said the widest draw isn't a problem, it's, it's not a problem if you can tuck in. John Baptiste looped the whole field. He went about five wide the whole way around. He's a couple of pounds lower. He was right on the heels of uh, Astro King. He's what? three times the price. So I thought he'd go well. And what I especially liked about him was his run in the Cambridge. He was fourth home in the Cambridge off a higher mark last year. Uh, he made the running on his side uh, and just sort of got, got tired late on. I think dropping back to a mile first time up on nice quick ground, if he, if, if uh, uh, Rowan Scott, I think, rides him, uh, can get, get him out and get him forward, I think he might be quite hard to catch because he does stay well. He, he, he beat Lucando, who's a decent horse over a mile and a quarter last year. So... That was my angle. I thought from stall two, maybe Jean-Baptiste might sort of grab that rail and sort of be hard to catch because he stays very well. Okay, yeah. And like I said, I do think that is uh, that is key. It can be quite a long way home at uh, that uh, at straight over at uh, Thursk. Astro King, then 4-1. I did think Trey Floor was uh, one of the most interesting ones as well. Uh, Tom, like you said, um, stays a bit further. Incredibly well handicapped. We're never really put in the race at Newbury. But um, I quite like Del Grey Boy here for uh, for Tim Easterby uh, with Jerome Fentiman on board. Um, never put in the race at uh, a red car. Uh, and uh, ran a bit of a cracker last time I had at Haydock, I, uh, I thought. Uh, if you ignore his seasonal debuts, he's never been out the front four in mile handicaps. Clearly gets a little bit better with a few runs. And um, his half-brother, Highway Grey, went from a mark of 64 to 89. I thought this could be a little bit of a plot for Tim Easterby. Mm, yeah, interesting, yeah. He, he, didn't, he wasn't on my radar, but <laughs> like um, Tom says, the, the draw... At Thirst, it's not really an advantage to be on the inside there. Like Stall 1 has got a terrible record in these races. I think he's won for 33 since 2017. Um, and I don't know what it is. I presume maybe they all come across you over on top of you around the bend. Maybe the ground gets a little bit churned up there on the inside. It certainly seems to be a bit of a positive if you can come strong late down the wide outside at first, I always think. Yeah, sometimes you do get horses come from literally last to first down mm. down the centre of the, uh, the track. It's a, I'm not, it's a bit Ascot in the way that it... It's like Ascot in reverse in the way that it looks around the bend. Sometimes you think, surely that can't win, and they yeah. come flying down the middle and get a clean run. Mm. Um, yeah, you're right, and um, I mean... 11 has actually been one of the better draws, and that's where mm. your one's drawn, Del Grey Boy. Mine's drawn even higher, because I'm, I'm with Trey Fleur, uh, which you both mentioned already, mm. but you haven't, you haven't well, gone for him. To you to <laughs> yeah, 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 thanks, yeah. Um, no, he's obviously really well handicapped. Um, his last win was off a of mark of 92. He's back down to 87, so he's £5 below his last winning mark. And he just shaped quite well last time out, didn't he, mm. at uh, Newbury BI Modern News. I think that was the Spring Cup, isn't it? Or the Spring Mile, one of those two, they call them. And I thought he shaped like he was coming back to form. We've got Sylvester up, so hopefully... I mean, Sylvester's quite a busy jockey, isn't he? And he can take a keen hold. I, I, you know, I'm hoping he can get him a position up there. Uh, he doesn't get too far behind, like Tom says. But um, I won't be worrying too much about it. You know, he, he's, it's an, This is the hardest race of the day for me. You know, we've just seen that impossible handicap at Newmarket. <laughs> this looks even harder, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it is, and obviously, like I said, I always feel a bit, uh, David, with the uh, the northern uh, handicaps as well. Uh, you get a lot of southern trainers coming up, thinking, "Yeah, we'll we'll take in what looks an easier race on paper." And uh, your Easterbys and your Barons and your Omaras uh, say, "Yeah, good luck trying," uh, because we've been plotting one up here for three months. Yeah, the market obviously headed by Sir Michael Stout's runner, but there is a strong home representation as you'd expect, and. A couple of those Yorkshire trainers you mentioned are the subject of our first price boost of the evening. 
Tim Easterby and David O'Mara come up with five between them in this race. One of their five to win was two to one, is now 11 to four. Couple that caught my eye, Cruyff Turn will hopefully improve for his first run of the season. He did 12 months ago, so we need him to do the same again. And on a session, he's on a very, very long losing run, but he was second at uh, Lingfield on Good Friday for David and Nicola Barron, who you just mentioned there as well. So I'm hoping a long-awaited win is not too far away for on a session. OK, lovely stuff. On a session, then 8-1. to one. Cruyff turn, 8-1, to one, given that uh, Johan win the Lincoln. Uh, maybe Cruyff turn could go on and win the Thursk Hunts Cup. Uh, but your tip is? Trey Floor. Trey Floor it is. Tom? Uh, I'm having a little bit on Jean-Baptiste. Very well. Uh, I will go with Del Grey Boy. Uh, David Stevens. Well, I'm going to be greedy and take the pair. Cruyff Turner on a session. Lovely stuff. There you go. Uh, Hunt Cup covered at Thursday. Back to Newmarket. Uh, maybe rattle through these uh, the next couple because otherwise uh, the uh, show will come to an end by the time we get to the guineas. Uh, but uh, we've got the Suffolk handicap here. Nine furlongs uh, is the uh, the distance. Uh, a bit of a, uh, a spring Cambridgeshire for you. Uh, Fast Medicine and De Harby are 130 joint favourites. Moving time four to one. Forest Falcon 15 to two. Turntable eights. Notre Bellabete is eight to one. Lucanda 11s. Anything today 12s and bigger prices the rest. Uh, an intriguing little handicap here, this uh, Graham Rodway, uh, with a, a golfing horse returning off the back of a lengthy absence, uh, a horse uh, trained by Peter chapel Hyam, who bolted up by six lengths last time out. That's a sentence I haven't said very often. <laughs> uh, and so um, plenty of other types as well. And uh, I've, I've quite, I quite fancy the, uh, the Johnston runner to potentially leave them all gasping from the, uh, from the front as well. So it's a good race, this. What do, yeah, you, uh, what do um, you like? Yeah, Forrest Falcon, yeah, the John Sauce was, was high up on my list as well. Yeah, he's obviously improved. This is a good race. I mean, the, this is full of improvers, isn't it, this race? Um, I don't know what to make of the Godolphin horse, but his favourite and everything that Charlie Appleby runs on that <laughs> roadie mile seems to win, apart from your beer, of course, which managed to somehow get beat. Um, but uh, I thought it was between Forrest Falcon, but I'll leave that one to you. The one that I'm going to back is Notre Belle Bette. I think that's how you say it. I mean, that's how you said it, so we'll go with it. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Andrew Balding has won this race twice in the last 10 years. He won it with Tullius, I think it was 10 years ago, mm. and he was a decent horse when he it was. And um, Bell Rock, of course, last year. And uh, I just think he would have had this in mind uh, for this horse. Now, all of his forms on the all weather, but he's really progressive on the all weather. He's won three of his last four. Last time on turf, he finished ninth behind Johan in the Lincoln. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong with that run at all, beating only four lengths. Um, I just think he's still going forward. He's carrying a £5 penalty for that last win at Kempton. He only won by a short head, but I thought he was valued for a bit further than the winning margin. Yeah, I mean, it's a, another really good race. I think we'll see a good horse come out of this race, but it's not Trebel Bette for me. OK, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see a, a good uh, horse come out of this race. Like you said, Tullius, yeah, that takes you back, doesn't he? He was a, uh, a proper uh, yardstick in, uh, in group races from here on uh, in. Uh, Andrew Balding with a, a chance with Notre Bell Bete. Um, what did you make of this uh, this contest? Obviously, you've got the uh, the absent Godolphin horse to uh, potentially uh, spoil things for you, Tom. But in theory, it makes the market if you if you put a line through everyone back in the Appleby runner. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you can't rule it out. I mean, rule him out, can you? The only thing I'd say is he's entered in the Hardwick, and that's over a mile and a half. This is you know nine furlongs on. Pretty quick ground, be a good effort to to win, to win uh, there. I thought you like you boys said, Forest Falcon is very dangerous from the front. All these Mark Johnson horses on when the ground gets decent. I know it wasn't rattling fast today, but it was still good ground. When when his horses get rolling from the front at downhill tracks like Newmarket, they are hard to catch. Uh, so I would I was he, he was uh, second on my list. My top of my list was the top one though. Move in time for Roger Varian. He was incredibly impressive when he beat Kamari, who went on to win the King's Vars in his maiden here. And then he ran in two uh, black type races afterwards against, I think it was Mohafeth at Royal Ascot and uh, Real World at Newbury. And he just didn't quite fire. He just didn't quite look in the same form. I'm wondering whether he might be better fresh. He's been gelded. He's got Harry Davis taking seven off. I know he's got a high rating, but he deserves it after his group race runs. And I just thought he might outclass them. Yeah, I yeah. think with the Roger Varian horses going so well. I mean, he had two winners again at Newmarket today, didn't he? Uh, I thought moving time might just outclass him. I see he's been well backed. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. I think I think he might be a class above. Yeah, he's um, he's one of those horses again. You mentioned Great Ambassador earlier, but there's a few that you kind of put on your list, and you think you could just back these throughout the season. And I think eventually you'll 
uh, you'll get paid uh, get paid out. Um, but yeah, I thought Forest Falcon. I I think this might be my first proper bet of the flat season so far because I tried to go through it looking for things I didn't like about him and, and kept finding more things I do like about him. Apart from yeah. the, the fact that the uh, they had a winner very similar type today, of course, beating Yabir, but horses beat him last spring are rated 100 and 104. Um, when he won at Yarmouth, the horses behind have won seven handicaps between them, and obviously Pied Piper uh, has come out and uh, proved himself to be a grade one winning, uh, winning hurdler. Um, uh, Joe Fanning's on board, who was on board today when making all the running. He's running him once when he won easily over at, uh, at Carlisle, and I think that Chelmsford race is really, really good. I think that trawl line will be very interesting, and uh, he went down the rail, which it looks a bit dead at Chelsea recently, Tom. So, um, travel really well, got caught in a pocket. Yeah, if he gets out on the uh, loose on the lead, I can see him being very hard to peg back. I think you need to get the graphics guys to start shortening up that Forest Falcon, Ross, because you've made a very good case for him. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I the only thing I I, I why I well at the time uh, when I when I did it, moving time was a couple of points bigger. I just thought he might have a little bit too much class for him, but. You know, at the prices now, I'm, I would be, I couldn't put you off Forest Falcon. I think he's got a good chance. Okay, well, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, uh, it could go either way. After a furlong, I could be thrilled to bits, David, or uh, switching the telly off in disgust. But um, that's the uh, the way it goes. What did you think of this? Yeah, well, I might give you a reason for for getting put off Forest Falcon. It's my selection as well here. <laughs> uh, he's yet another horse. So I'm hoping will improve from a third first time up this season. I think being back on the turf as well should help this one. The Johnston team amongst the winners today, as was, of course, Roger Varian. I think that goes some way to, to uh, explaining the money for moving time, as well as the fact that it's Tom's selection there. And our beautiful beast, Rodders. No, it's not how we feel about you. That's the French pronunciation, or sorry, the English <laughs> translation of Notre Belle Bet. Our beautiful beast. Beautiful. Yeah. Is that, uh, has that increased or decreased to your confidence in this election? I'll certainly be thinking that Notre Bell Betty is a beautiful beast yeah. if he does the business here. If, yeah. if it, but, but given the way it runs, it'll probably get up on the line and chin mine, so please don't do that. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, You're very confident, Ross, aren't you? Uh, very confident. I'm too confident. I'm too confident. <laughs> but I do like these... The, the, sometimes you find the odd Johnston runner in particular, I think, where everything is going to set up right for them, and it's absolutely perfect. They had the second in this May Danny, of course, who went on to, to win at mm. Glorious Goodwood and... and yeah. uh, was proven to be a very good horse. Uh, and they won it um, a few years ago with Tartan Giga. Uh, if you remember that one, Tom, a few years ago. But uh, hopefully, Forrest Falcon will leave them all uh, in his wake in the 225 at Newmarket. Dave, you got a price boost for us? Yes, indeed. You mentioned Peter Chappelheim's fast medicine at the start of this. He's currently 130, but four to one for the next couple of hours, up to 20 quid. So the coral compilers taking on Peter Chappelheim's fast medicine. Lovely stuff. Uh, OK, uh, what wins the Suffolk? Yeah, I'm with the beautiful beast in Notre Belle Bet. Lovely stuff. I uh, will go with the Forest Falcon. Tom Siegel? Uh, moving time for me. OK, lovely stuff. And David Stevens? I will cast the deciding vote in favour of Forest Falcon. Lovely stuff. Well, hopefully the, uh, the Falcon can eat up the seagull uh, on the, uh, the home <laughs> straight and the beast will be left in its wake. But uh, moving on then, very different types of horses uh, at uh, a new market for the three o'clock. Five furlongs is the distance for the Palace House Stakes, uh, a group three contest. Uh, and we uh, have uh, another one of those sprinters that have been talked up about being a group horse um, pretty much since he, uh, he set foot on a track and he finally gets the chance uh, to prove whether he is or not. And that is, of course, Twilight Calls for a man who knows uh, how to uh, train a good sprinter in Henry Candy. Three to one. Tis Marvellous, nine to two. Came from the dark, five to one. Hurricane Iver, eight to one. Arecibo, tens. Zarzini is 11 to one. Atlas Bay, twelves. Cardem is 14 to one. And it is uh, 18 to one bar those here for this five furlong contest uh, then here over uh, at, uh, at Newmarket. Um, Tom, I'll come to you first for the, uh, for the sprinters uh, here because... Yeah, Twilight Calls goes off favourite every single time he uh, he runs. Um, even when he was, you know, rated low to mid eighties. Um, I mean, it was a, it was the worst kept secret in, in racing that everyone thinks that Twilight Calls was going to be a group class sprinter. But who are we to argue with Henry Candy? Who are we to argue with Sheevely Park as well? Um, they don't seem to put a foot wrong, flat or jumps. No, no, you, you, you sort of know where they're coming from, don't you? With Twilight Calls, the only thing I'd say is this: I. Th Rodders was saying that the Thirst Hunt Cup was the hardest race. I thought this was the hardest race of the of the of the of the weekend because I don't know that it's it's a five furlong sprint with about ten hold up horses in it. You know they all want to be held up out the back. It could be you know and there's, there's I, I'm, that's why I ended up on 
I haven't tipped it, but I thought I might have a few quid on Cardem from stall one from, from the front for William Buick, because I thought he might be the only one that's, that wants to go forward because Twilight Calls is held up. It's marvellous, doesn't go on, came from the dark. Hurricane Ivor might, you know, sort of chase, but most of them will hold up horses. Mondemej, there he is, existent, existent. They're all hold up horses. And I wondered whether there was going to be any pace for these horses to get out. Now, normally in five furlong group races, something goes on and something goes fast because they can't help themselves. But I didn't think there was going to be a flat out pace in this. And I just wondered whether Cardem might nick it from the front. I'm, I also think came from the dark is potentially the best horse in the race. I can't believe Twilight calls his favorite over him on form myself. So uh, if, if there's a if there's a pace, I think came from the dark will win. And if Cardem gets an easy sort of can do what he likes from store one, I thought he might run outrun his prices. But I thought it was really hard. OK, yeah, there's potentially. I mean, the problem is uh, the only potentially obvious pace angle, Tom, uh, is a, a yard switcher. Atlas Bay was a pretty keen goer last year, but has gone to Robert Cowell first time out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was wondering whether they might not, you know, and it was, I didn't think it was a blaster anyway. Hmm. I thought, I mean, it, 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 it won the race at Sandown. It won a great race, was it? The listed race at Sandown, was it the Dragon State? I can't remember what it was called, but it, it yeah. wasn't a great race. The form wasn't brilliant and it wasn't blasting and the times weren't you know, like off the charts fast. Hmm. Yeah, and, and like I said, he switches yards as well, so who knows what they're, yeah. uh, they're going to do with him. But um, probably the horse like Twilight Calls, David, uh, from a bookmaking perspective, is um, y you know he's going to get backed. Uh, he always goes off favourite because even if even if you you look at him and think, well, on form, he's a five, six, seven to one shot, you know that's going to get smashed into three to one anyway. So um, you're kind of ducking the expected bullets, aren't you? Yeah, he's always had this reputation, obviously, as you say, which means he, he attracts the sport. But he also did look pretty good last time. He won that Coesley at the course. I thought he's obviously been gouded since last year. Maybe that's just going to be the sort of final key to him. But I agree with Tom. I thought it was a really, really tricky race. And as a result, I shall end up just throwing a few quid at Jamie Spencer and Robert Cal on Arecibo. They were unlucky. I mean, how many times we say that about a Jamie Spencer ride? They were unlucky in this race last year. Second in a king stand. There's ability there. I look, Twilight calls might just be too good for them now he might just be improving at a rate of knots that you know he will be this this top sprinter but at double figure odds Arecibo will be the one for me each way okay Arecibo then uh Cardem Arecibo Mondemege <laughs> they're all back they're all back aren't they uh but that's why like calls is the uh, the new kid on the block uh, Graham so far today you've been going with uh age and experience over uh, over youth and beauty as it were yeah. What are you What are you siding with in this one? Yeah, I'm, go, I'm going with the the old the old horse again. Yeah, tis marvellous. Uh, of course, the, the the issue is all of his best forms at Ascot. He mm -hmm. runs all his best races at Ascot, and this is a fast five, isn't it? Ascot's a stiff five, um, and he won at Beverly last year, which of course is a very stiff five. So you told me why it won't win, Graham. Why, but, <laughs> why do you think he will? But he did run very well at Newbury um, when he was beaten narrowly by. Um, uh, Hurricane Ivor, who's in this race, but Hurricane Ivor, of course, has got the penalty for that. Um, so he's waited to, to, to reverse the form here. Three pounds better off with him um, for a length. Um, and, and his last, you know, it, you know it, it might be a bit silly to do so, but if you say that, that he had won that race because he gets three pounds here off of Hurricane Ivor, he could easily be coming in on, on whatever, five in a row, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I know he didn't win that race, yeah. but. Do you get where I'm coming from? I, 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 I think yeah, like so, if, yeah. If, I think if, if, if you put three pounds on him that day, he would have won. Yeah. Three pounds on Hurricane Ivor. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so he's flying, isn't he, anyway? You know. <laughs> he was in great form, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and Clive Cox, right, don't train anything other than sprinters, does he? Like, no. I, I've actually, you know, they, you pigeonhole some trainers, but I actually did his stable tour the other day, and, and he doesn't have many runners over, like, a mile and a half or more, and he just just trains these sorts of horses. And, and how many times in the past have you got thought, oh, that, that, that sprinter of Cox's don't look very good, and then suddenly it just turns into a really good sprinter. I remember Lethal Force... I know he was a lot younger, and the other one that, that wasn't that good as a two-year-old and three-year-old, and then suddenly turned into a top-class sprinter. Harry Angel was Harry, was Harry Angel one yeah, of well, them. Well, Harry Angel was always good, wasn't he? But yeah. there was there was a couple that you thought, oh, they're they're, they're not great, yeah. and then suddenly just turned in. I mean, I'm not saying that's good that Tis Marvelous is going to go on and dominate the division or anything, but he's definitely better than he ever has been at the age of eight. And um, he, he is what he's run here once, and he was only beaten a length over six furlongs behind Gifted Master in the the handicap that we previewed earlier. So it's not that he's completely bombed out anymore because like you said he just predominantly runs elsewhere yeah exactly and all his best forms elsewhere but um, yeah. but that's uh, because he predominantly runs elsewhere <laughs> yeah I mean it's not like we're I've been asked to take a short price he's 11 yeah. to 2 and you know for me he's got 
three of the best four pieces of form in the race, okay. and, and they're quite recent. Last tis, time out, tis marvellous though. Yeah, yeah, tis marvellous. Tis marvellous, it is. Okay, uh, plenty of. Uh, uh, potential, I'm not going to say old rogues, but uh, this is what you get with uh, with Group 3 uh, three sprinters, don't you? You get um, old friends, shall we say, um, uh, and there are quite a few. There's Mondemage is one of those. Depends how fast it is, because he's still three from three, five furlongs fast ground, good to firm. So. Yes, make the case, Ross. Come on, well, let's uh, give Mondemage a bit of love. Come I was going to give a bit of love, and then I looked at the times, and I thought, it's just not quick enough for him, is it? <laughs> but he'll go to York. I, I, honestly, five furlongs, good to firm, rattling fast ground. He, he's going to be a monster this year. Monster Mondemage, <laughs> that'll be the headline. <laughs> Um, and Tom will um, never speak to us again because he's sick to the back teeth of us talking about this horse. Um, but uh, what else? Has anyone else got any uh, any selections here? Atlas Bay each way says Destiny Sounds. Twilight Calls will love the ground. Good thing, says Bubba1407. Uh, and St. Lawrence, 22 on each way. Yeah, he's an intriguing horse as well. He's another one who kind of lost his way. Uh, but uh, he could make a nice uh, sprinter this season as well uh, for an informed team. So... Palace House Stakes, tough race it is. Twilight calls 3 to 1 favourite, but uh, Rod is going for Tis Marvellous. Yep. Tom Siegel? Uh, I think came from the darks the best horse in the race. Okay, very well. Uh, and uh, David? Uh, Arecibo each way, and it is four places each way, which by the sound of it, we are going to need every one of those. Yeah, I'm, uh, and I'm not touching this race with a barge pole because <laughs> there's too many horses who've cost me cash in the past. But if Cardem wins... You might never see me again. Um, moving on then, uh, and we should move on to the feature race of Saturday's card, the first classic of the season, and potentially the first uh, uh, superstar of uh, the year. If the two-year-old form last year is standing up and it's looking uh, as, uh, as good as we hoped, then we could have some very good three-year-olds indeed this year, headed by, of course, the unbeaten native trail. He's five to four uh, to win the 2000 guineas this year, but he does have uh, a, a big danger in his own stable in the shape of uh, a Caribus who's completely at the other end of the track at 9-2. to two. Then you've got uh, also the unbeaten Luxembourg at 11-2 to two, and Point Lonsdale 11-1 to one from the Ballydoyle Battalions. Perfect Power, who should be unbeaten uh, if he wasn't a little bit unlucky at Goodwood last year, of course, as well. Check and Challenge, who's come from nowhere with that Newcastle the win to throw down uh, a bit of a squeak as well. Iden, who won on the bridle in the field and stakes. Royal Patronage, who's got form tied in with plenty of these as well. It's a cracking guineas, uh, uh, Graham, but... Um, um, it's absolutely uh, unsurprising to see Native Trail such a warm favourite here because, um, I mean, he looked like a three-year-old he, when he was a two-year-old. Um, and he's come back as a three-year-old and he's fit well and, uh, and powered clear in a, uh, a pretty good trial. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's unbeaten, isn't he? He is, yeah. <laughs> and he's you beat know, most of these as well. Yeah, we don't know how good he is. I always say that with unbeaten horses. You, you know, until they get beaten, you don't really know their limits. Mm. They, might, they might find a little bit more and... Um, I think he's by far the most likely winner of the race. By far the most likely winner of the race. But he, he's priced up accordingly, isn't he? I mean, we are talking about 15 run of guineas where they're going to be spread out all across the track, as Tom's already said. Who knows where you might want to be drawn. He hits flat spots in his races, which in a big field like this could easily see him run into some trouble. And I think that he will probably win. Don't get me wrong, but I just would not think that he was a betting proposition at the price that he is okay yeah um we haven't had a winning favorite since 2017 some some decent i mean some really good horses have been beaten in this 120 plus horses 10 sovereigns pinatubo air force blue tormor kingston hill toronado they're all names that now you think oh yeah but they weren't that good but at the time exactly. people were like this could these could be the second coming yeah i mean better horses than native trail have been beaten in this race and yeah. uh, but 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 frankel was a similar type and he won yeah um, there was another one, was it Churchill, I think? Churchill. I mean, yeah, yeah we have Saxon Warrior, yeah. Churchill, Dawn Approach, Camelot, so they've all gone in. Sorry, yeah, Tom? The difference, Ross, he's had a run, hasn't he? He has all had those a run. you were talking about were coming into the race and we didn't know whether they'd trained on, how good they were, what form they were on. Native Trails had a run. Yeah. And none of those ones you mentioned came in here on the back of a run. Maybe Toronado did, I don't think so. But uh, he's had a run, we know he's in form, you know, we know he's trained on, we know he's, the, 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 the Craven was a good effort. You know, I, I don't think we can we can throw him under the bus as a horse that won't. We, we don't know how good he. Is. I think I think he's the best horse in the race. What might get him beat is the circumstances of the race. Mm. You know, a Kingman situation or a Hawkwin situation, because it happens all the time in this race. Yeah. Magna Grecia won. Two horses went up the rail, didn't they? And all the West 
last year, as you pointed out at the start of the show, you know, all you couldn't, you had to be low numbers to win. Turned out being the best horses, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You know, normally the best horse wins, but you can get beaten by being on the wrong side of the track. And that is the issue with Native Trail. It's a, it, there's a big, there is always some sort of angle to, uh, to be had on the new market track. And from stall 50, I can't believe Charlie, Charlie Apple, but after, after the race, you might think 15 was brilliant. Mm. But, but, I mean, but when you say beaten by, I mean, it's it's almost um, it's almost quite comical the way it's it's unfolded, isn't it? You've said right, you have the highest draw, you have the yeah. lowest draw, uh, and you're and then stick the two O'Brien horses uh, a few uh, off the whip. I mean, Point Lonsdale's three lower than Native Trail, Luxembourg's three higher than Caribus. It is you're almost going to have two um, you know price fighters on either side, aren't you? Yeah, and funnily enough, I was thinking if. if for example, the high numbers came, were shown to be have an advantage in the sprint beforehand. Is that good for Native Trail being in 15 or bad? Because if it's because in my way of thinking, they'll all come over then, won't they? And they'll all end up on the rail, and he gets in his flat spot, and he's got to get through traffic and do all these sort of things. So it's a really tricky one for them. I, I'm hoping they all stay out the middle and there's no advantage. Today it didn't look like there was any massive advantage anyway. I mean, some horses were coming up the stands rail and been running very good races as well. Or one horse did. He hang over to this stuff, this side, and ran well. So I'm hoping it's fair, and I think if it's fair, Native Trail will win because I think he's the best horse. But mm. there is that there is that chance that something could happen, and uh, for me, the big danger has to be Luxembourg yeah. because I just don't think people know how good he is. I mean, I, I keep reading that people tell me he wasn't impressive in the Doncaster race. Yeah, I mean, I, I had this conversation earlier, Tom, and I mean, it depends what you mean by impressive in the sense that he didn't he didn't win by five, six, seven lengths. But if you look at that race, as he goes to the front, he's he's not necessarily on the bridle, but he's going he's barely going through the gears and everything else is flat to the boards. And um, it was bad ground at the back end of the season as well. I mean, he, he, he barely broke a sweat, really. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And he was in front, you know, two furlongs out in a good race. You know, Bayside Boy was in there. Uh, Imperial Fighter was in there. You know, good horses that had run against all these other lots, sort of, you know, the Caribuses of this world. And he, and, he, and he was in front two furlongs out. What I think people are saying is that he didn't run away from them mm. when they were expecting him to. But it was soft ground. It was at the end of the season, as you say. I, I you know, on run style, he looks more like a mile or two than a derby horse to me. Because he had so much pace. I mean, when you watch Camelot and those horses win the the uh, the uh, maturity or or the mile races as two year olds, they weren't winning it going to the front, you know, miles out and showing loads of pace. He showed an amazing turn of foot to win at uh, the Cover, I think it was second time out. So I think I don't see the trip being that big an issue for him, even though Aiden's telling everyone he's definitely a Derby horse, and I think he's the danger from on the other side. I think I, I'm. I'm not a hundred percent certain about Paribus myself. Uh, I'm not sure the form's that good. His form, uh, really, uh, and I think it's between the two of them. But there are a few outsiders that, if the draw plays funny games, we can have a look at mm. later on. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, Luxembourg is an eleven to two show. Are they? Of course, um, the last three. Uh, Bally Doyle winners uh, of that race at Doncaster did go on to win the the Guineas as well. So um, clearly, it is a, a well worn path for them. And I think Aidan's got to tell everyone that they're a Derby horse, just in case they're a Derby horse, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't know how good Luxembourg is, do we? Yeah. Well, we know he's not as good as Native Trail yet on what we've seen. That's for sure. Um, and he's well, not as good as Perfect Power yet yeah. on well, what yeah, we've seen. Yeah, uh, I don't think anyway. Um, who, who last year was um, obviously? I mean. At Newbury, it was, uh, is this horse a sprinter, is this horse a sprinter? And obviously, there's plenty of speed on the sire side, but tons of stamina on the dam side, and he didn't look like a sprinter at Newbury. Oh, I think he'll definitely stay. I'm mm. not worried about the trip for him. Um, it's, it's whether the others have sort of developed past him, because yeah. he's quite exposed, isn't he? But he keeps winning, and I thought he, he looked like the sort of horse who could win Group 1 mile races when he won at Newbury. The way he went through the race, he travelled well, and he showed a good, smart turn of foot to go and put the race to bed. And um, for me, he's, he's nowhere near the sort of price that he should be. You know, he's he's fourteen to one up on the board. You know, I, I think he's more like a six, seven to one shot. Um, and the other one that I thought was worth having a go at Native Trail with each way was Dubawi Legend, mm -hmm. which finished second to him last year. I think it was in the Dewhurst at Newmarket. Um, Hugo Palmer, first time out. His horses always go well fresh. Hugo Palmer, they're always really. Good first time up, and uh, he's got a good record when sticking tongue tie on first time. 
I tipped one of his the other day called Hierarchy, who he put a tongue tie on, drifted like a barge, and then ran a stormer, but couldn't get anywhere near Go Bears Go. But um, yeah, I mean, again, that that one, you know, is a big, big price, twenty-eight to one. Mm. And, and the yard had a uh, horse make all at Red Car yesterday over a mile. You get the feeling from Box Fourteen. Yeah, it, it might be a an, a, a complete um, kind of repeat of the Dewhurst in the sense that he will be on the rail, Native Trail will be right behind him. Um, and mm. it, I mean, he might get passed again, but... He might, well, yeah, I mean, like Tom's already made the points exactly spot yeah. on. You know, Native Trail wins if this doesn't go funny, but yeah. this is a funny race, and in a funny race, I'm, I'm happy to have a couple each way against him, Perfect yeah. Power and Dubawi Legend at double-figure prices. OK, Perfect Power and Dubawi Legend then for, for Graham. There's a possibility, of course, you could back... I was just looking, Dubawi Legend and Prosperous Voyage, for example, on the Sunday, you've got the two... Inspiral and, and Native Trail are going to be very short price favourites for this, and you've got the two horses who chase them home constantly. You think, well, it looks. I thought that might be an interesting each way double for the place angle. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone's. If it's five to four, the best horses. Then why is it twenty-five to one for the second best horses potentially? But um, uh, Tom, you said there was a few in here we could have a go at, uh, at big prices. Um, do you agree with orders, or is the or is there something else that caught your eye? Yeah, I, I, I get his, his perfect power logic. I. I did the figures and the sectionals for for, for perfect power, and I'm, I wasn't convinced he was powering home uh, over seven the other day. I think Loose Sale was catching him, and I think a few horses were ran the, the last few furlongs a bit quicker than him. I I do think I would worry about him at a mile. I have to say because I think Guineas winners they get racing so far from home that you have to stay really really well to win a Guineas. Uh, and I think I'd, I would be slightly worried about him, but I get his form analysis. I mean, I, he's spot on about him being the wrong price on form. Uh, the one I have had a few quid on at 80 to 1 is Berkshire Shadow for Andrew Balding. He was the winner of the Coventry. He was an impressive winner of the Coventry. Then he went to Goodwood in soft ground, and he was second to Angel Blue, who went on to win two group ones, was third in the thing. He, he hates soft ground. And in the Dewhurst, when he was fourth, he was the he raced right on the outside. The first three who run here all raced up the rail. Uh, he raced in the middle on the, in the swamp, finished fourth, beaten four lengths. I think if he gets beaten three lengths or two lengths by a native trail this time, he'll be in the frame. And uh, therefore, I thought the 80 to one about him. Andrew Balding won it, won this race two years ago, Camaco, first time up. I understand he's working very well. I think the brand will suit. He's got a middle draw, which I quite like because he can go either way then. And I just thought at 80 to 1, he would, he, he's would he got a much better chance than those odds. I mean, you just have to watch the Coventry again to see what a good horse he is. And he's got form that ties in. And he's not, you know, if you look at the figures, he's third or fourth on the top speed figures. He's third and fourth on the racing post ratings. He's 80 to 1. That'll do for me. First four. OK, lovely stuff then, yeah. He was uh, isolated down the centre in the Dewhurst on the Coventry. Dawn Approach, of course, the, the last horse to, uh, to, uh, to double up. Other horses we probably should mention as well uh, as we go to you, David, for, uh, for how the market's been playing out. You've got Royal Patronage, who uh, won the Royal Lodge, uh, which, of course, Frankel did as well, and Mr Bailey's back in 1993. Uh, and uh, Point Lonsdale as well. We haven't really talked about him too much. Um, I mean, if Luxembourg's a derby horse, then what's Point Lonsdale? I mean, sure, he, uh, is he a ledger horse? But, um, I mean, he, he, he looks... Uh, one that's maybe lacking a few gears, but could be a nice horse the, uh, throughout the uh, the season. But what did you make of the uh, the 2000 guineas this year? Uh, first things, I think it's a, an absolutely brilliant race and you've got the right favourite and a worthy favourite given what he's done. But I agree with Rodders in that he's plenty short enough uh, given the opposition he faces. And, and for me, the second favourite in this race should be Luxembourg, not Caribus. Admirable the Caribus is. I think mean, if you fancy Caribus, you've got to fancy Royal Patronage, who... To my mind, beat him fair and square in the Royal Lodge and is, what, a good four or five times the price. Uh, Luxembourg, obviously, a Group 1 winning two-year-old as well. And Aidan O'Brien always brings them here fresh. I wouldn't have any concerns about him. Point Lonsdale, you've got to say, was put in his place really by Native Trail in the national stakes. But it'll be interesting to see the Ballydoyle horses, to see how they've sort of wintered. Because yeah, the, the feeling coming from, from Ballydoyle that, that you know, they're fairly confident that they'll, 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 they'll sort of close the gap on Native Trail. So that'll be fascinating but I'm with Rodders. I'm a massive Perfect Power fan. I mean, he's a dual group running two-year-old, uh, the same as Native Trail. He's won his trial, the same as Native Trail. Uh, he's got Christoph Sumin in the plate, which for me is a huge positive. OK, temperament, slight question mark. Got to watch him at the start. And I get Tom's point about was he really sort of seeing out the, the seventh furlong at Newbury and, and will the extra furlong uh, really suit him? But I'm willing to take a chance that it would at the prices. But um, yeah, I think it's a brilliant race and 
And hopefully it is one of those we do just see the best horse win because you can get messy guineas, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I say, plenty of Group 1 winning juveniles in there. May the best horse win. Yeah, that's, uh, that is true. Although, admittedly, you, know, you do get messy guineas, but like I said, when Kingman got beat and by Night of Thunder, it turned out to be an absolute blinding renewal as well, didn't it? So uh, even when the best horse supposedly gets beat, um, the second and third best horses can still be very, very good indeed. Uh, Native Trail and Fighter for favourite. Let's see what they, uh, they make of it on the uh, the chat. Well, lots and lots of opinions. I'm going to try and w- work through these. Um, Bubba thinks Barks of Shadows is a sprinter. Uh, Jesus is with Light Infantry and Lucille. Um, the the Irish win the 2000 guineas says Tom Leach. He is laying the favourite as well. That was up on the screen earlier on. Off World says Perfect Power is a massive bet at 14 to 1. Mark Smith fancies Royal Patronage says it's overpriced. Uh, and uh, the Craven form is terrible, says the Chameleon uh, uh, for, for that one. Uh, Native Trail Perfect Power 1 2 uh, says, uh, says Off World as well. A big bundit says Luxembourg for me. Uh, in the, the 2000 guineas. So a cracking renewal. Uh, best horse in the race is officially Native Trail. Doesn't mean it's necessarily going to win. And you're hoping that a couple out run the odds, Square Rodway? Yeah, I'll back Perfect Power and um, Dabawi Legend is his name, yep. each way. There you yep. go. Okay. Uh, and I will go with, uh, with Luxembourg. I think I should completely agree with you, Tom, uh, which very rarely <laughs> happens. But Luxembourg and uh, Berkshire Shadow to run a big race at a big price. Yeah, yeah, and I don't. I think he'll stay further than that. His granddam is a horse called Islington, which the oldies like me and Dave will remember. She won the Yorkshire Oaks, mm. and she was a proper one of those Bally McColl, real proper staying families. I think he'll stay a mile easily, perhaps even further. Okay, and uh, David Stevens. Uh, yeah, p- uh, perfect pair each way for me. Islington, what a filly she was. Um, a couple of uh, price boosts on this race very quickly. A non Godolphin winner. They got the first two in the betting, but a non Godolphin winner is two to one from seven to four. But if you fancy Caribus, we were nine to two, but six to one up to 20 quid for the next couple of hours or so. Six to one Caribus. Okay. Caribus and six to one out for nine to two uh, for the the next couple of hours. Um, Right. Fantastic race. Let's hope uh, it uh, is as good. Uh, in the flesh as it is on paper. Uh, moving on to Sunday then, we've got the 1,000 guineas of course, but let's uh, quickly rattle through the pretty poly stakes and see whether we have a potential Oaks winner uh, in the uh, the reckoning here. Cronell 7-4 with the Moonlight 9-4, to four. Uh, Peripatetic is 5-1, to one. Uh, Set Horizon 15-2, to two. Orion 9-1, to one. Kick on Girl 16s, Machere 16s as well. Uh, some uh, beautifully bred uh, fillies here, uh, Tom. Uh, bear in mind we've got the, uh, the other guineas to get through. Uh, quickly, um, did you have an angle in this? Not really. The only angle I had is I wasn't sure Cronell really was desperate for the step up in trips by Kingman. Uh, I thought the Frankel filly of Char- uh, Charlie Appleby's had better form. I would have been with, I would have had them the other way in the market, but we do know that Cronell's uh, bit and firing having won her maiden the other day. So I liked uh, with the moonlight really, just because she had the better form. Okay, there you go. Great. Yeah, I mean, they went quite hard in that race at Newmarket over a mile, you know, and she mm. she was quite strong at the finish, Cornell. So, yeah, I mean, Gosden's won this six times. Only Cecil's won it more. Um, I think that she's most likely winner. The market's got it right, though. The Appleby horse is obviously the horse to beat. Yeah, she's um, uh, from the family of Logician, of course, at Cornell, but some lovely uh, pages on here. Um, uh, Set her eyes and comes from the family of, frankly, Darling, and Orion, uh, the dam, comes from the family of Australia as well. So plenty of... Uh, potential uh, future uh, group winners in uh, here to Gruda, Ouija board, Talent all won this and then the Oaks. Um, uh, pretty poly thoughts, David, or maybe even a price boost uh, or anything or nothing. And we'll move on. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh- I just thought Cronella was plenty short enough. Interesting, she didn't have any fancy entries, so maybe hadn't been showing them an awful lot at home last year. She beat Fontaine and Neck last time and Peripatetic in there at five to one, beat Fontaine a little bit further last year and at a much bigger price with the variant table, uh, team in good form, I would go for peripatetic. Okay, lovely stuff, beautifully pronounced as well. Uh, pretty poly stakes then, uh, moving on uh, to the, the 1,000 guineas uh, on Sunday, uh, where uh, Tenebrism heads the betting here at uh, three to one. Uh, and what a uh, strange profile she's got. Uh, bolted up in March, uh, not seen until September, uh, and then came careering away in Group 1 company uh, to, uh, to return to the guineas uh, having never raced uh, further than six furlongs, but it's been done in the past. Uh, five to one discoveries, eleven to two Tuesday. Malavaf eleven to two. Zelly is eight to one. Uh, the first uh, uh, UK train horse is Wild Beauty at tens. Uh, Mise en scene is fourteen to one. A Maynard at sixteen to one. Uh, it is Cache at eighteens. Juncture at eighteens. 
prosperous voyage at 20 to 1. Sandrine 22s, Hello You 33s, and Flash Betty 125 to 1. Uh, and uh, bearing in mind that Hello You, Sandrine, prosperous voyage, cachet, all had really good group form last year. This suggests we've also got a fantastic 1,000 guineas, Tom, as well as a fantastic 2,000 guineas. But uh, Tenebrism, like I said, um, we, uh, she was on nobody's lips, uh, even when uh, turning up in the Shrevely Park in the morning. She went off double figure odds, she's careered away, and uh, she's, uh, she's here as three to one favourite, by default, of course, because the anti post favourite hasn't made it. Yeah, two of, the, two of the main market leaders during the week came out, didn't they, in Sparrow and Homeless Songs. Tenebrism, 14 to one when she won at the Cheveley Park, didn't suggest to me, now that suggests to me that she wasn't ready. They didn't, I'm not sure they were thinking she wasn't very good. I was thinking that she's had so many issues, as you pointed out, she'd been off for so long. But maybe they didn't think she was up, she was ready to win that. And it was sort of a, a, a race to bring her on for next year or later on in that season. She did win it. She looked good. Question is, by Caravaggio, will she stay the mile? I think they think she will. I'm not so convinced myself. I think she might be six, seven furlong filly. Discoveries looked good when she beat Agatha in the Moy Glare, but it's only middling form. I think what people are going on is that all her sisters... Uh, Alpine Star and Alpha Centuri improved massively as three-year-olds, and I think they're thinking that she might do the same. If that's the case, she'll she'll go well. Uh, I thought Malavath had a chance, definitely. Be a could be a great day for the breeze up horses. A uh, great weekend. Native Trail was a breeze up horse. Malavath was a breeze up horse. So I thought they could go well. The one I thought was overpriced though, because I think the key race was probably the Phillies mile last year because we've already had Cache come out and win the trial. We've had Wild Beauty come out and win the trial. They both ran in it. I know you're going to think I'm going to say Prosperous Voyage. I'm not. I'm going to say My Zen Scene for James Ferguson, the man who we were talking about earlier, having his horses in great form. He's incredibly well bred. She's a uh, she's by uh, Siuni, I think, out of a Galileo mare which makes, uh, you know, that's the same cross as St. Mark's Basilica. It's the same cross as Sotsas, two of the best horses we've had around in the last two years. He only's only a young sire. I think I love that cross. I love the pedigrees uh, uh, in, in these guineas races. And I thought, if you watch that race again, the ground was too soft. She got too far back. She raced, yeah, I think I think it was traps one, two, and three, mm. or first, second, and third. And she was sort of held up out the back in the middle. I know Prosperous Voice came over to the other side, but she was actually drawn in the middle. Cache and Inspiral raced up the middle. And I think she can reverse that form. And I thought 14 to 1, she was a good each way bet. So that would be my selection, Mize N Scene. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, she does come from a, uh, a family of speciosa as well, if you dig further enough, and, and, and pride. So real uh, top class animals. I did think that potentially she would, um, she would improve for this. Uh, with uh, with further in time, uh, uh, Tom. But I, I agree. I think she's possible. a yeah. She's a very classy. It's very possible. Horse. It's yeah. very possible. But we've had Oaks winners win this, haven't we? And then you know, yeah. horse, lots of horses win guineas and go on to be better over further. Most of them do, in fact, don't they? So, you know, I wouldn't. You know, if she's a ten furlong filly, if she's a top class ten furlong filly, it didn't stop her from winning this, would it? No, that's uh, that's absolutely absolutely fair enough. Of course, yeah, we weren't we weren't saying. Uh, we we'll probably saying similar things about love uh, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, Tenebrism, though, three to one uh, uh, favourites uh, here. Um, Discoveries at uh, five to one. Yeah, you've got um, you've got Irish form, you've got French form, uh, you've got British form, we've got trials, we've got uh, horses coming from uh, maidens as well. I mean, obviously we've got a lot of good form on here. Tuesday in at eleven to two catches my eye a little bit. I mean, talking about breeding. Uh, if, if she's not bred to be a group one horse, then I don't know yeah. what it is. Lily Langtree, yeah. She was mm. a good filly, wasn't she? I think she won the Coronation Stakes, didn't she, uh, Dan? Uh, usually when O'Brien wins this, I think he's got a better record with horses coming in straight off than he has with the horses that have had a run. I mean, he has won it with horses who have had a run. Uh, but I did run out the stats on it, and I think he's had more runners who had a run um, for less winners, if you yep. know what I mean. Um, that was a couple of weeks ago I did that, so memory hopefully is, is still good. But... Um, I thought Tenebrism was the likely winner of the race. I mean, she she um, she looked very good when she won uh, last season at the track. It was a weird race, wasn't it? She came up like the the sort of stands rail, was it? Yeah. And some of them were on the other side. But nevertheless, like the time's really solid, and uh, and I think she's the likely winner. Um, a bit like Native Trail, although I do think I don't think she is um, underpriced. If you know what I mean, I think uh, around what is she three to one there. You know, I think that that is more than fair, really. Yeah, she, 
I get I the feeling that the people don't quite know how to price work because all winter everyone's thinking in spiral, in spiral, in spiral, and then suddenly mm. bombshell this week, and it's like, oh, actually, what price is tenebrism without in spiral? Yeah, it could be a bit like that, couldn't it? I mean, people didn't seem to know what to put her in after no. in spiral came out. Um, I think I think she's got the best form in the race, tenebrism, that, that win last time. But the one that I will back against, uh, um, well, I'll, ba I'll back tenebrism, but I'll back um, cachet uh, mm. each way against her because... Um, she ran in that Phillies mile. She was just ahead of Mize in the scene. Um, but she has definitely come on. Um, she has improved a lot over the winter. I was at Newmarket that day when she won the Neil Gwynn. And she has really grown a lot. She, she has improved significantly over the winter, this horse. Um, and we know it as well. She, she showed it in that race. She was very impressive that day. I think she'll get a mile. She ran a couple of times over a mile last year. She's just overpriced, I think, because who she's trained by George Bowie is probably not well known for having guineas winners, is he quite yet? Obviously, for all he's a very you promising young, yeah, for all he's very young, promising young trainer, you know, he, you know, he's he's still on his way up, isn't he? Mm. Um, he's not Aidan O'Brien, for example, and but um, is is that the problem with you? You, you, you know, your James Ferguson's, your George Bowie's, in this, it, they're, they're kind of thinking, oh, this is the best horse I've ever trained, and uh, you, your Godolphin and your Bally Doyle boys are going. You've got a long way to go well, to know how good it is to win a Guineas. Yeah, yeah, it is that. Although, you know, small trainers have won it before, and they? Pam Sly won yeah. it, didn't she, um, with Speciosa years ago. But um, I who, just who think... Won, who was the last horse to win the Nell Green and then go on to win the Guineas. So. Really? Oh, I could uh, follow in our footsteps. But um, I just think that often, not only the, the, the 1,000, but the 2,000 Guineas, and we said it with Native Trail, Tom said it, it's not always the, the now horse that... It's not always the, the best horse that wins it. It's the now horse yeah, yeah, that wins fair. it. You know, the horse that's like fit and ready and right to go on the day. And I just know that Cachet is going to go there fit, right and ready on the day. She is the now horse in the race and I think she'll definitely run well. Whether she's good enough to beat Tenebrism and all the other really exciting fillies in the race who will probably develop into much better fillies than her in time is questionable. But we know that she is the now filly. We know that she's going to be right for this race. OK, uh, Cache, Dan, who's a double-figure price. Um, similar comments to, to Sandrine. We talked about mise en scene being on the wrong part of the track. We talked about Boxer Shadow being on the, part of the, the wrong part of the track. Tenebrism's 3-1. to one. Sandrine was 3-1 to one to beat Tenebrism last year and was on the wrong part of the track. Uh, I can't quite understand uh, what price, uh, why, why she's such a big price, given uh, she's, um, uh, of course, a Kirsten uh, rousing horse. Plenty of stamina on the damn side. Uh, in fact, Sandrine, 22-1. to one. But I do like the look of Tuesday. Uh, uh, for uh, for this uh, this race, real strong speed figure when winning last time out, and uh, uh, Empress Josephine uh, won the uh, the Irish One Thousand last year, similar type, and I think Tuesday could go well, David Stevens, for again another cracking guineas. It, it really is, yeah. I mean, Group One winners: Discovery, Tenebrism, Zelly, Wild Beauty, uh, the Now Grim winner, Now um, Cache in there. Uh, Tuesday's actually been very well backed for the Oaks. Uh, so as a daughter of Galileo, perhaps not surprising, but could clearly still run a massive race here. But I'm in total and utter agreement with Mr. Graham Robway here. I think Tenebrism is the most likely winner. I thought it was an extraordinary training performance made in O'Brien. She won a maiden in March, and then we didn't see her until she won the Cheveley Park. The vibes are pretty strong from her, and I think she's a worthy favourite. And I also like the chance of Cachet, and I totally agree. If she was trained by a bigger name, a, a, a Gosden or a Stout, etc., I don't think she'd be, what is she, 18 to 1, four places each way. She's fit, she's well. I was at Newmarket as well when she won the Now Gwyn. I think she's being under, uh, I think she, we're not giving her enough respect for being a fit and well Now Gwyn winner and 18 to 1 each way, along with the favourite. They would be my two. Okay, there you go. Plenty of opinions then in the the 1,000 uh, guineas. Uh, Tenebrism then 3 to 1 favourite, uh, of course, uh, won the uh, Shoefley Park Alcohol Free, won it a couple of seasons ago, and of course, uh, Special Duty won it back in 2009, was uh, uh, in, uh, involved in a very controversial finish in this race. Uh, the 2022 1,000 guineas, Graham Rodway, your winner is... Well, yeah, I think ten, Tenebrism will win, and I'll back Tenebrism to win, but I will also back Cache each way against her at double figures. Lovely stuff. And Tom Siegel? Uh, I will and have backed Mise en Scene. OK. And uh, David Stevens with your tip and also a, uh, a Guineas price boost double? Indeed. Uh, same two as Rodders for me, Tenebrism and Cache each way. But if you think it's going to be a very good weekend for Aidan O'Brien and the lads from Cornwall which we've seen before on this weekend. Aidan O'Brien to train both winners of the Guineas. Of course, he's got Luxembourg, Point Lonsdale, Tuesday and Tenebrism. Was 17-2, to 10-1, to 1, the Ballydoyle Guineas double. 
Okay, yeah, I, uh, I think that's a bad little uh, bet because uh, my each way bet was going to be Tuesday Luxembourg each way double uh, for the uh, for the two guineas then. So uh, could be worth taking that ten to one. Uh, quick shout out to people's at home. Tenebrism for the, uh, for the chameleon. Alex Jeffrey says I'll take a slice of cachet cake. Uh, Jesus says Epitont bolts up. Uh, not sure what re- show you're watching. Uh, Wild Beauty Wind says uh, says Off World Tuesday. Uh, also for Jesus again. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, and uh, Tenebrism, Tenebrism, uh, and Tenebrism. And A1 says, I absolutely love this show. Well, thank you for watching, uh, A1. It is a pleasure to uh, have you. But we need to wrap it up. Uh, and uh, we've uh, pretty much covered every angle over the year, the course of the weekend. The angle we haven't covered, of course, is the naps. Uh, uh, so let's get the best bets from everyone on the show tonight. Starting off to the, the left of me, Graham Rodway, Nap of the Weekend. I fancy Dark Jedi, which is running... <laughs> On Sunday, the 150 at Newmarket on Sunday, uh, Dark Jedi, Tim Easterby trains it. Now, um, yeah, I, I handicapped the, the staying division for, for the post nowadays, and um, yeah, I thought this one very, uh, very eye-catching race last time out. Tim Easterby bringing it all the way down to Newmarket for the 150 on Sunday. So Dark Jedi. There you go. wasn't expecting that. Uh, Dark Jedi for, uh, for uh, Rodders. Tom, have you got a curveball? Uh, no, but I'm not going to be as annoying to go against your forest falcon which i had planned to do so i'm being the chivalrous man and leaving that one up to you ross Thanks, i mate. will <laughs> i will uh suggest uh mise en scene in the 1000 guineas i think she's going to run really well okay uh, and i was going to go for forest falcon but uh no, <laughs> <laughs> no hopefully forest falcon uh, can uh, frank that uh, chelmsford four which i think is very good and make all the other uh, running in the suffolk handicap on saturday david stevens nap of the weekend I will go for perfect power in the Kipco 2000 guineas. And a quick shout out for our racing super series free to play game. Uh, Pick a horse be placed in seven selected races tomorrow for a chance to win a share of or indeed all of 25 grand. Lovely stuff. I hope everyone enjoys uh, the uh, the Guineas weekend. It looks an absolute cracker. Uh, Hopefully we'll see a superstar emerge, whether it be Native Trail, whether it be Tenebrism or something from left field. It certainly sets up the flat season beautifully and we'll be here to cover it throughout the summer on In The Know. But uh, we won't be back until the eve of the Oaks and the Derby. So enjoy the rest of May. Uh, Thank you to Graham, Tom and David and uh, enjoy your weekend. Good night from us.